This was a first for us. We were given the opportunity to raise beef cows on the neighbor's property. Oh, and by the way, we're going to build a meat closet there and process them ourselves. It's butcher day. How do you feel about butchering the cows? I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> okay, Liam, why do you love it? Because then I can fill my stomach. With what? With beef. Do you love beef? Delicious beef. <laughs> True. Plus, why does it make you sad? Because I don't like it. You don't like it? But do you like to eat beef? Yeah. Like that meatloaf right there. Do you like to eat that meatloaf? Yeah. Is it tasty? Yeah. Well, we get the beef to make the meatloaf from those cows over there. And the, and the beef that we get over there, we can make delicious nachos and ragu and... Ooh, we yeah. make all that stuff with beef. What do you think about that? It's lots of feels, isn't it? It's a complicated thing. They got him! Woo! The cows are dead! Awesome! Are you excited about that now? Yeah! Thank you so much, cows, for your sacrifice. Now we can grow big and strong. Thank you, cows. Thank you, cows. Welcome to my butcher shop. This handsome hubby of mine brought home a deer and a bear this year, which we processed at home. The only other help he's had is from the bearded butchers online. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Christmas dinner. There we go. And then we just put the off of there. Such. Mm. And then I'll trim this up and I'll expose a couple inches of the bone. We'll cut it like right. You can see that seam right there. Oh, yeah. So we'll cut it right there. We'll clean all this off the bones. Clean up the edge a little bit. And then that's your, that's your prime rib. Well done, babe. The hard thing about documenting projects like this is my hands are always dirty too, but I'll show you what I did get. It was an exhausting but very special few days as a family. And there are bound to be some blog posts following as well. homeschooling at its best. We cut and wrapped over 500 pounds of beef and saved almost 140 pounds of bones. I had to start giving some away. And then there's what we saved for our dog. <laughs> we feed our dog a raw diet. 
There's a lot to this, so please do your research before you attempt it yourself. But we were able to set aside over 220 pounds of less desirable pieces and bones for her. <laughs> Good girl. Are you so excited? I don't even know how you're going to grip this thing. Oh, she did it. Let's do a recap. How is the beef? Good. Oh, good. What's been your favorite thing that mommy's made with the beef? Cut it up. Cut it up? <laughs> yes. What's nachos. Been... Oh, do you love nachos? Yes. Oh, no, yeah. ribeye steaks. Ooh, those were good too. And that prime rib was really good. Yeah. All right. And a biscuit. Are you still sad about cows? Yes. You are? Yes. Oh. Or are you just <laughs> saying that? All right, mister. What did you learn from this process? I learned a lot. I learned how the whole process goes of killing the cows. And yeah. I learned a lot about the cows, like d different parts about a cow. And Remember those joints? Yeah, that was really cool. We got that to play was... with joints. It was really fun. <laughs> and you were trying to dig the bone marrow out of the yeah. out of the bone? Yeah, and it was, so, and it was crazy to see... How different the how bit more big the liver is from a chicken liver. <laughs> that was. It's like maybe a hundred of chicken yeah, livers. I was just thinking the same thing. And I learned how to package meat. I learned a lot of different like steaks and stuff. Yeah. And Daddy even. And had, how to spell the steaks because you were labeling them. Yeah, and Daddy even let me cut a piece of meat out. That's pretty cool. No bears. Yeah, and we're not then, talking about. Bears, we're talking about <laughs> cows. <laughs> Would you do it again? Yeah, I'd do it again. Should we kill cows again, Drew? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. All right. So, why did we end up processing these cows? Big money saver to process these cows ourselves. I don't know exactly what the cost Butchers per weight is, but around here they cost. I think they charge 90 cents per pound hanging weight. And I already process all of my game animals in the field, so the anatomy is a little bit different on these cows, but for the most part, and obviously you're working with a much larger animal, but this yeah. would be comparable to like a, a bull elk or something like that, which we would take care of in the field and pack out with backpacks. So You would quarter um, them down, right? We would, yeah, you quarter them down, take all the loose meat off, and you try to debone them if you can. Um, that saves a lot of weight. Um, obviously in our situation, I'd bring the bones back, but, yeah. um, most people try to just leave the bones out there cause it's a lot of extra weight. Um, Especially if you're backpacking in. Yeah. And you're miles in. And I don't want to say most do, uh, there's quite a few people who probably like the marrow and stuff out of the bones, but, um, for the most part, bring them out in quarters. All right. So we did have to invest in some stuff to be able to do this process. Um, we already had a meat grinder. We had the meat grinder from doing the game animals, and um, we haven't really used that with our chickens or anything, but... We did with the turkeys. But with the turkeys, it made sense with the toms. Yeah. Because um, they were just so big, and... We couldn't even bag them up. It just made sense, but... I mean, in order to really get after this and make it a real operation, it, with just using a knife and a handsaw would have been... We wouldn't have been able to go through, and I wouldn't have been able to get all the cuts. Um, that you traditionally get off of a cow. The steaks, the New Yorks, the fillets, ribs, short ribs, flank steaks, tri-tips, um, and ground meat, just because it, it really requires having a, a bandsaw um, to process that and get the rib cage knocked down. Um, and learned a lot doing that, but I definitely would not have taken this on had we not had the full setup to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, we were about to attempt it without a bandsaw, but yeah. we realized 
that's kind of necessary. But the meat cooler, we couldn't have done it without. No, I mean, I saw that writing on the wall early that yeah. if we were going to do this, I mean, like when I, this will be highly valuable when I bring a bear or deer or an elk home. Um, when we typically process like this, it's a little tricky when I get home with game animals because I don't, unless it's late season, like late November, December, it's not really cold enough out to just leave the meat hanging. So then um, obviously without clearing a bunch of room in the fridge and keeping it cool that way, which isn't the best way to do it, I typically have to kind of semi flash freeze it. Um, I try not to get it rock hard, but I throw it in and then pull it out after a couple hours and then just, it's just a circle of processing. But with the meat cooler, these cows were able to hang for, um, we hung ours, I started about 10 days after we butchered ours. That's when you did the ours. prime rib, and then you let the rest sit for a couple more days after Christmas. And then I let and... those sit for a couple more days, and and then Tony's mm. Tony's cow, my hunting partner's cow, his went 15 days before we processed it. And, and it, then you knocked it out in what six hours between the two of you? Uh, no, it was a little well. It was a little more than that. We started about 3:30 p.m., but I was teaching oh, Tony yeah, how I to go so. through that, and we got we got done about 2 a.m. But we we did the grind and everything. It was 100 percent done. Yeah, I went to bed. So. But um, I think we both learned a lot about the cuts and where they come from and and then seeing hands-on what they look like. Mm -hmm. When we bought half a cow last year, I, you know, I would see top sirloin and I'd be like, okay, I don't know what to do with yeah. this. And now I know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a mental picture in my head and I know where he cut it off from and it's just... It's really cool now to have that knowledge, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's going to leave me, you know? Yeah. And even even our eight-year-old picked up a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was between the house and the, the garage to wrap stuff while he was cutting because of mom duties and whatnot. And when I would go out there, I'd be like, okay, um, I would look at what he had in bins ready for wrapping, and I'd be like, okay, those are New York's, like, those are fillets, I already, I know this. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was, that was really, really cool. And, yeah. and I mean, by the time I got to the second cow, I was moving pretty good. So yeah, I had to keep kind of going back and touching base on some videos I watched, um, for the first cow. Um, but the second cow I did in a whole day, we didn't grind it, but I did all four quarters of the cow in one day. So. It's very doable. You can definitely do it at home. It is a little bit of an investment for equipment and whatnot. I bought all new knives for this. Um, I see we can use those for the chickens and stuff too. Which I'm sure she'll put on the website and give a rundown of the tools that we bought. We could even post some links probably of the ones that I got. Um, but we definitely bought everything and it made the process a lot. A lot easier. Smaller. Yeah. We had kind of a, what's the word? Uh, assembly line. Yeah, assembly line. Thank you. Yeah, we had that going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, any other takeaways? No, I mean, I'm glad the beef tastes good. Oh I guess that. Oh my gosh, me too. Unless you're doing this a bunch, <clears throat> you can't guarantee that. I guess. Um, so going into this, we weren't sure a hundred percent on that. You hope that that first piece of beef you take <laughs> yeah. off tastes pretty good, and then obviously after. Right, because when you, when you hang the beef, you lose, it sucks most of the moisture out of the meat um, on the surface, so you lose a little bit of weight in the, the cooling process and the hanging process, the aging process, I guess what they call it. Um, and then right away, you know, if you were to take a piece of that beef right away after you butchered it or right after you killed it and it was still warm and whatnot, um, it's typically a little tougher at that time, and it would probably have more what people would call that gamey taste. Yeah. Um, I don't taste that in it at all. Um, <laughs> it's funny because we were just talking about that. We haven't even really tasted that in any of your game animals, though, either. we got to be upfront about that. But, no, I mean... But it's I mean, really good beef. I have a... I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I have a hard time with the whole gamey flavor and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I'm, I I feel like most people who say that something tastes gamey, it's because they're they're used to just buying what's at the the local market, right? And, grain fed um, everything. And I guess if you were to compare a grain fed cow, which would definitely have more fat and it would have mm -hmm. quite a bit more weight to it, 
Um, if you were to compare that to a, a grass-fed, grass-finished beef like us, then I guess if you want to use the word gamey or more, uh, a lot of people say like more rich in the actual flavor of the beef, um, whereas uh, in a in a grain-fed, it's definitely good beef, but it it just tastes a little bit different. Yeah, um, you are what you eat. The beefy flavor is more rich in yeah. a grass-fed, grass-finished. Um, same with a wild game animal, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't really, I don't resonate with the, the gamey taste. Yeah. Business. Um, I did want to, I mean, I'll write more about this because it's just way too much to get into in the video. But there were a lot of things that we learned, but most of them were in how we raise the animals. Because that was a, that was a mm. huge learning curve. Um, but yeah, I... I also wanted to mention how much we value this beef yeah. versus like we bought half a cow last year and yeah, it meant as much to us as the money that we shelled totally. out for it, right? But like... But you vetted that and you knew who we were getting it from, where we were getting totally. it from, what it was fed. Like we had a pretty good track record with the beef that we were buying yeah i mean even in the ground that you've been buying you've been having a market yeah. bring it in from a special place and totally so i mean we've definitely picked and choosed where we're yeah. getting stuff we haven't just gone to the market to buy meat right um and now we won't go to the market to buy meat right but what i was getting at was that 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 beef that we've been buying is worth as much as we've paid for it mm -hmm. but this feels like it's worth so much more because of all the effort that went into it. Right. Yeah. It's like priceless ish beef. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, it was just, it was really cool to, um, to see the different cuts that can, that can be from mm -hmm. like, say I'm just, my mind goes to prime rib, which is also ribeyes, which is also those tomahawk steaks. Well, pulling like, the flank steak off the tri-tip, the sirloin steaks, arm roasts, ground meat. I mean, a lot of that you could turn into ground if you wanted to. And then, I mean, I know you'll see like the amount of meat that we took off for our dog. Um, there was probably some in there that was left to be desired that probably could have been turned into ground, but I was a little, I, I'm used to being pretty conservative with what I cut off and making sure I get a lot of the silver skin and extra stuff off that makes the meat tough. Um, some people like to leave it on. Um, it's definitely an extra barrier for freezer protection when you got it in there, but I don't personally, with the way we go through meat, I don't personally like spending the extra time when we thaw it out to, to trim that stuff. I'd rather just do it on the front end of the process. Um, and regardless, that's less meat that we have to either raise or buy yeah, for the that, dog. Exactly. So, so at the end of the day, I don't mind throwing extra meat in there for her because yeah. it's it's cost effective for us anyways. Totally. Um, so that worked out really well. And I mean, it, and in what we do, as you can see, we, we reuse everything. Right. Um, so there really was, you look at it and you go two full cows, whereas you know, maybe a grain fed full cow, depending on how long you raise them for, you might get 600, 650, 700 pounds. Um, cause I have some friends who did that, but, um, off two cows, we got over 500 pounds of like clean trimmed meat. Human grade, right. <laughs> um, it's just ready to cook. There's no extra stuff to do to it. Um, but between soup bones and stuff for the dog and whatnot, I mean, we got another, what, 350, 400 pounds, something like that. So it's like, yeah. it's, it's a lot. So we reused every, every bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. Um, all right. So would you do it again? Yeah, we'll do it again. I, I mean, I think as we continue to dive down this road of doing meat chickens and egg layers and doing beef cows and stuff like that it's just it's yeah it's just another step towards being sustainable and i mean if you do it i don't see a point in going back to buying beef no. at this point now that we've done it um there's obviously things that we would do different from the start um not necessarily in the raising of the cows themselves but or how the beef turned out or even how i processed them i wouldn't change how i processed them but right um the management just, though. Just make sure that you take charge <clears throat> from the get go of your situation and your cow. Yeah. Um, especially if you have an opinion or a way that you want to do it, just make sure you take charge and 
it'll save you a little bit of headache down the road. Do your research and uh, just know that it is a lot of work, um, but that's what we're here for and we live for it, so. It was worth it, it was so worth it. And uh, yeah, even just seeing the lessons that our kids took from it, it was really cool. Yeah. Well done, babe. Good job, babe. We did it. <laughs>